child, you're invited to take your child into the hall uh, where um, they won't disturb the rest of the congregation. And another relative of innovation is to invite all young people to come to the first three rows of the cathedral here so um, they can see better what's happening in the course of the Mass. Now in these last few moments, let us prepare ourselves by entering into a silence, waiting on the Lord, waiting expectantly for the mystery that's about to be enacted on the altar. Thank you. Can we try and enter into the silence at the back also, please?
dropped at you from above you heavens, and let the clouds rain down the just one. Let the earth be opened and bring forth a Savior. Dropped at you from above you heavens, and let the clouds rain down the just Before we begin our liturgy, uh, you're invited to, in a way of getting to know each other a bit more, to turn someone near you, exchange names, that, just that, and say you will pray for them during this Mass. As we do that, I would like to invite the child to come and light the, the fourth Advent candle, the last candle before the... Who would like to come and do that? Would you like to come and light the fourth candle for us? You know, each of the candle represents something important. Today, the candle represents peace. So as he lights, what's her name? Progress. progress. Amazing name. So as progress lights the candle, we pray for peace. Peace in our world. He lights this one. Peace in our families. Peace in the church. And especially peace in our hearts. Thank you, progress. We have gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We are welcome again to the fourth Sunday of Advent, the last Sunday before Christmas. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sin and so prepare ourselves to and ask God for his mercy so that we may celebrate sacredly the sacred mystery, word with the sacred mysteries. Awareness that we are in communion of angels and saints let us confess. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
grant us prayer. Poor fault, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ, your Son, was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz and said, Ask the Lord your God for a sign for yourself, coming either from the depths of Sheol or from the heights above. No, Ahaz answered. I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Listen now, house of David. Are you not satisfied with trying the patience of men without trying the patience of my God too? The Lord himself, therefore, will give you a sign. It is this, the maiden is with child and will soon give birth to a son whom she will call Emmanuel, a name which means God is with us. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Let the Lord enter, he is the King of glory. Let the Lord enter, he is the King of glory. The Lord is the earth and its fullness. And all its peoples. It is He who set it on the seas. On the waters He made it firm.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. From Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, who has been called to be an apostle and specially chosen to preach the good news that God promised long ago through his prophets in the scriptures. This news is about the Son of God, who, according to the human nature he took, was a descendant of David. It is about Jesus Christ our Lord, who, in the order of the Spirit, the Spirit of holiness that was in him, was proclaimed Son of God in all his power through his resurrection from the dead. Through him we received grace and our apostolic mission to preach the obedience of faith to all pagan nations in honor of his name. You are one of these nations and by his call belong to Jesus Christ. To you all then, who are God's beloved in Rome, called to be saints, may God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ send grace and peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. This is how Jesus Christ came to be born. His mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they came to live together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a man of honor, and wanting to spare her publicity, decided to divorce her informally. He had made up his mind to do this when the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because she has conceived what is in her by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you must name him Jesus because he is the one who is to save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill the words spoken by the Lord through the prophet, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, a name which means God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had told him to do. He took his wife to his home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let the Lord enter. He is the King of glory. Let the Lord enter. As Catholic 
Christians, we tend to think, even to assume, that the notion of God coming into our life is always, is naturally, an attractive idea. But if we come to think of it, is it so obviously natural and attractive to have the Almighty God, the Creator and Architect of the universe, the planets, the furthest galaxies come into our life into our reality. It could also be an upsetting and unsettling prospect. Perhaps we need to ponder this mystery more deeply. Do we tremble at the wonder of it? In answer to the question, will you let Jesus into your life? Many understand the question quite well, perfectly well, but balk at it. They understand it, but they don't want to let it happen. Well, why? It might upset things. It might change things more than I'm prepared to change. To have God living within me, well, he may want to change things. He may want to take over. Are we, am I, ready for that? Perhaps we, perhaps I, prefer to remain in control of my life, to do things my way, to remain in the driving seat. Am I prepared to allow God, to allow Jesus, to allow the Holy Spirit, rather than my own ego, to direct my heart, to direct my path, the direction of my life. In this Sunday's readings, we encounter people who found the invasion of God into their lives something distressing. The readings remind us that Jesus is not just a passive presence within us. Yes, Jesus comes to us at Christmas as a meek and humble babe, Emmanuel, as Isaiah tells Ahaz in the first reading. And this is true. It is God's tender kindness and gentle courtesy. He doesn't want to force us he leaves us free to say thanks, but no thanks. But Emmanuel, God with us, God within us, if we let him in, this Emmanuel, the creator and redeemer of the universe, is also a challenging Lord. We just sang the refrain to the processional psalm that was chanted as the Ark of the Covenant entered into the temple in Jerusalem. Let the Lord enter. He is the King of glory. Now we have another entrance. The event was outwardly invisible. Even the betrothed Joseph was not a witness. It happened in an obscure and remote outpost of the Roman Empire, the Galilean town, inhabited by a forgotten clan of Davidic descent. The conception of Jesus in the womb of the Blessed Virgin is the great entrance of God into the temple of the body of the Virgin. The Blessed Mother is also an icon of the church. In scripture, say the fathers, what is spoken of the Virgin Mary 
is, in a personal way, can rightly be applied in a general way to the Virgin Mother, the Church, the mystical body of Christ, the new and final temple made not of stone but of living stones of human hearts and minds and bodies. Every faithful soul is in a way, in a sense, the mother of Christ, says blessed Isaac of Stella, one of the fathers. Let the Lord enter. Let him enter our hearts, our minds, and our bodies. He is the King of glory. So the theme that runs through our readings this Sunday is the invasion of God's presence into the lives of people, into human lives. A little further on in chapter 7 of Isaiah, that was our first reading, God offers to intervene in the life of King Ahaz, and the king's response is, thanks, but no thanks. In the gospel, Jesus invades the lives of Mary and Joseph with his presence. Perhaps their aspiration had been simply to lead quiet and peaceful lives in their sleepy Davidic village of Nazareth, awaiting the fulfillment of God's promises to their ancestors through the prophets, the coming of the Messiah. But after the Annunciation and invitation of the Archangel Gabriel, and after Mary's response, and just think of it, what if she had said thanks but no thanks? But after her response, yes, let it be done to me, the presence of God in their lives means an end to business as usual and the typical comfort of ordinary life. Joseph is disturbed to find his fiancée pregnant and fears to marry her, either because he suspects wrongdoing on her part, which is the modern view, or because he hesitates to espouse a woman so holy as to be set apart for the conception of divinity, the conception of God made man, which is the classical and traditional view. Their lives are not going to be normal and typical. Like the Old Testament Joseph, son of Jacob, he of the many colored coat, who was a great dreamer, so God communicates with the New Testament Joseph, son of Jacob, through dreams. And in his dream, the angel tells Joseph, this son of David, that it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in Mary and that she will bear a son whom he is to call Yeshua, translated into Greek as Jesus. This name, Yeshua, in Hebrew, means salvation because he will save his people from sins, from their sins. Jesus did not come merely to save us from hell, the consequence of sin. He came to save us from sinning, and there is a difference. He came to enable us to live holy lives. A life of sin is miserable. In fact, it's a kind of hell on earth, but it is addictive. We need a higher power. We need a higher person to set us free. And Jesus came not just for 
his own Jewish people. He came for all of us sitting here at Mass this, all, this morning. He came for us all, for all the nations represented here, for Abedonians, Scots, English, Nigerians, French, Ghanaians, Zimbabweans, even for a white Dutch Zimbabwean, Poles, Lithuanians, Goans, Keralese, Italians, South Americans, the lot. Mary and Joseph's lives would never again be average and comfortable because when God invades our lives, he takes us into his plan of salvation for the world. So now, as we prepare to enter the divine invasion of the Holy Eucharist, when God again will enter into our lives, our minds, our hearts, our bodies, are we ready? Are we ready to let our lives go off course, off into a new direction, perhaps even an uncomfortable direction, because God is now living in us? Or, shall we say, with Ahaz, thanks, but no thanks. So as we come to receive him in Holy Communion, will we mean it when we say that all-important Amen? Will I really admit him as the Lord of my life, the Lord of all parts and aspects of my life? Shall I let him enter and say, be the Lord of my heart, the Lord of my heart, life, the Lord of my body. I surrender. Take the steering wheel, the steering wheel of my life. You take it. You are, after all, the King of glory. Let him enter the King of glory. Let's stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, come substantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, he was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius spirit. He suffered dead and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who was the Father and the Son, is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and, sh and shall name him Jesus. With longing for the coming of Christ, we offer our prayers to the Father. For the church, that she may preach the good news with courage, integrity, and imagination, and be a source of blessing to the world, and of grace and peace to, our, to all who are called to be saints. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who seek the face of God, that they may look upon the face of Jesus and see in him the answer to their deepest longings. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the gift of creation, that the Lord who set the world upon the seas and made it firm upon the waters, may stir up within us a deep sense of responsibility for our common home. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who await the birth of a child, that the author of life may keep them safe, grant them joy, and fulfill their every hope. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all catechumens seeking baptism, and in this parish, Mark Chung and Lucinda Morris, and those seeking full communion with the church, Adrian Reed, Pauline Marsh, and Tom Klapweik, that Advent will be for them all a faith-filled journey towards the horizon of hope. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who are separated or divorced, that their hurts and wounds may be healed and that they may be made strong in wisdom and grace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the sick within our community and those who have asked for our prayers, particularly Lucinda Morris, Ina Ross, Rosalie Norvin, and Pauline Marsh, that God's face may shine upon them and bring them healing, strength, and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who've died, particularly Pat Buchanan, whose funeral took place on Friday, that they may be blessed throughout eternity by God, whose word is faithful and whose promises are sure. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all our personal intentions and those of our prayer partners, we pray for a moment in silence. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Merciful Father, give us the grace to turn to you. Let us see your face and we shall be saved. For Jesus is our Lord, now and forever. Amen. Just to encourage you for the offertory, if you are UK taxpayer, to make use of the gifted envelope at the end of the pew. It goes a long way to add to your donation. And to remind you, those who don't have cash, we have a contactless machine behind the church to give your offertory at the end. Thank you so much for your generous giving.
blessing on the Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the one we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Spirit and contrite may we be accepted by your Lord and may our sacrifice and service be the pleasing to you, Lord God. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify this gift laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power, the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracle of the prophet foretold him, the virgin mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his prayers. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as we at end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to each setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy this gift we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. 
and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chariots, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chariots to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chariots of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. story of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memory of his saving passion and of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence will rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Hugh, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestowed on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and from by divine teaching, we dare to say, Wow. 
deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Gracious, fragrant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from <coughs> sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostle, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy to enter under my roof, but the Lord is my soul.
Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the fixed day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the, nativi- of the mystery of your son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated to the moment. I don't know whether Joe's got something to say in a moment um, while he's coming up, just to remind you to return your bags of love by next Sunday, uh, that is Christmas, and uh, join the Catholic Women's Organization in spreading love and joy to others this Christmas. So they will be taking it out to those who need. Um, And if somebody wants to say briefly something about their experience of adoration because we're still looking for more people to adore um, so we can extend the hours of adoration, then uh, please come forward. In the meantime, Joe. Good afternoon, everyone. Good to see you all here. Lovely packed church, which is great. Um, Dick and Tony's homily this morning reminded me of a phone call I had earlier this week. Um, and I have a, one of my friends in Ireland, she's pregnant, and she's having a baby in February time. And so the, the bump is quite significant now. Um, and my, my best friend, who's, who's her husband, they, they spend time chatting to the baby together. And um, so they'll sit on the couch and they'll be like talking to the little bump and saying, oh, we're going to love you. We're going to make a lovely home for you and this is your mom and this is me and this is this is the house you live in this is the kitchen they're doing all these things explaining to this little bump that they love it so much even before it's created and so Deacon Tony's homily reminded me that this last week of Advent maybe we could talk to the bump maybe we could talk to the little baby Jesus inside inside the belly in preparation for his coming next Sunday and so I really encourage you, we've been talking about in the, this at youth group the past couple of weeks, I really encourage you as a family, if you could get together and pray to the little baby Jesus, I would be so full of joy to see us all come together next Sunday to be able to greet the baby in person. So I hope that you will be able to do that this week. Other than that, there will be no other uh, youth group or sacrament of preparation this coming week. Um, to let you pray to the baby Jesus. Um, And we will see you next Sunday at all the Christmas services and everything will be starting again in the new year, the week beginning the 7th of January, I think. But you all have different emails about that. So thank you very much and I hope you have a blessed rest of your Advent. God bless. Thank you, Joe. Now on Wednesday, there's an opportunity to unburden yourself of sin. There will be a reconciliation service led by Uh, the bishop and the priests of the deanery at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, the 21st of December. The Cathedral Bookshop, I hope, hope will be open. Uh, There are calendars, uh, Catholic diaries for um, next year. Uh, Even at this stage, there are some Advent calendars, and even at this stage, there are Christmas cards also, so... um, avail yourself of that and through the hall there is tea and coffee so we get to know each other uh, better Um, and now I don't know whether there is um, uh, Father may have something to say about gifts Today we usually say prayer, special prayer for the CWO CWO, the Catholic Women Organization they would have come forward, but we, we ask them really to stand up. We give thanks to the Lord. All the Catholic women, so there's, we are going to say a prayer for them. And afterward, I think there is a, a celebration in the hall by them. So may I invite you to stand up. All the Catholic women, please, 
please, pardon. And all the women, because if you are, if you are a, a woman or a, a lady or a girl, you are in anticipation, please stand up. It's a blessing for all of you. Just say prayer. You usually say a blessing at the end of the year. Except you can even stand up for your mother if you want to have her in mind. For your men, have her in mind as we pray for our mothers. All the Catholic women, ask God blessings upon them. Our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the gift of mothers. For the gift as we draw nearer, O oh Lord, to the nativity, the birth of your son through the Virgin Mother Mary. We ask your blessings, Lord, upon your, our mother's head, the women's. Come, Holy Spirit. Lord, may you fill them with that joy. May you fill them with that peace that your son brings for us. Lord, may they have that consolation of your Holy Spirit always with them. Lord, grant them their fortitude, the courage, the graces, O oh Lord, they need to continue to live out their vocation as mothers. And may the blessing of the Almighty God come upon you and remain with you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Then we ask, please stand up for the final blessing then. Just a word of thanks again to Dick and Tony for his wonderful homily. Thanks for our choirs. The parts that really struck me was Emmanuel, he is with us, but we have to let him in. We have to make that decision to let him in. He is with us, of course, always with us. Thank you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. We say prayer, synodal prayer to the Holy Spirit. If you have it, please do join. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name, with you alone to guide us. Make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote this order. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the truth and what is right. All this we ask of you, who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.